So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome uh, again to ESCP Open Day. Uh, this workshop is dedicated to admission tips. So Vikram and myself, we're going to uh, try to give you as much information as we can uh, in a half an hour. I think we have a strict schedule, so uh, we'll try to be very efficient. Uh, so my name is Nathalie quintin -Gesselius. I'm in charge of international recruitment for the MIM program and also for the Master of Science on uh, Big Data and Business Analytics. And also a new program we launched uh, with Centrale Supelec, which is an engineering school, uh, a new MSc in Industry Transformation Management. And I will let uh, Vikram um, introduce himself. Thank you, Natalie. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Vikram. Um, so I'm an MIM student. I finished my M1 and currently I'm in a gap year. So I did my first two semesters in Paris campus and currently I'm interning in Paris. Uh, it's been an amazing journey so far and I hope it continues to be the same. Thank you, Vikram. Uh, so we'll give you a couple of guidelines uh, first on the eligibility criteria. I know a lot of students uh, wonder if they're eligible for the program or not. Uh, so the main requirements is you need to have a bachelor degree with 180 C, 80, sorry, ECTS credits or a master degree. So some students might have a first year or second year master degree. Uh, English fluency, at least a B2 level since it's the main uh, language of instruction and it's the common language between all uh, students coming from, uh, from many different parts of the world. And you might have more than one language in common, but English will be uh, the program for, for um, the language for the program. Uh, you need to be internationally minded, um, as of course we expect students to have an interest in getting that uh, international exposure and also proven academic excellence. So you need to have a good uh, academic background. Uh, I know we get uh, the question, uh, is there a minimum GPA? It doesn't really work like this. Uh, as you can understand, we recruit students from many uh, different parts of the world and different programs and different schools uh, where the grading system is different. So you don't have to focus on a specific grade. We look at you know, the consistency of your background and uh, we look at all the uh, different items of your application. So what's considered a plus? Previous work experience, so if you have already an internship or two on your CV, that's great. If you speak additional languages to English also, it's always a, an advantage. And if you have some previous international experience or exposure, uh, that's also a great uh, plus in your, in your application. A few guidelines also uh, about which application process is the right one for you. If you studied in France for your bachelor degree, you need to apply through the French uh, direct application process, which is called concours d'admission directe. And you have to have a degree which is uh, visé by the French Ministry of Higher Education. Um, I just mentioned the, uh, the address uh, mimparis at escp.eu if you have specific questions on that uh, application process. And then for students who uh, did their bachelor outside of France, so any country except France, um, with a maximum of one year potentially in France, and I think that's more for European uh, students, uh, you can apply to either uh, international direct admission or join a school in France, which is our common application process with uh, HEC, EM Lyon, Audencia, and Schema. Maybe Vikram, you can tell us which application process you chose and maybe why you chose that specific um, process. Absolutely. So I, from my application process, I went through the direct application process, IDA process. So that is you send the application directly to ESCP. And in this, there's, uh, you're not considering the other universities. Uh, one of the reasons why I chose this was because I was very sure that I want to pursue a degree in uh, ESCP. And that was the reason why I applied directly instead of going through the join and school, join a school in France program. Uh, but if you are someone who is considering different options, 
then I would say this is a better choice because once you send the application, you're covering all the universities. So your uh, you know, workload gets reduced considerably. But uh, I think uh, the biggest advantage of applying directly through IDA process is that ESCP gets your information directly, which is not the case in IDA, uh, in join a school in France. So when you send an application directly, ESCP gets your information. And in case of any communication, uh, ESCP can directly approach you and they can contact you, which would not be possible. So yeah, I think both the uh, processes have its own benefits and you have to choose the one which is most suitable for you. Thank you, Vikram. And then there's a special cases. I think it's mostly also for European students. Sometimes you study in different countries and you get multiple degrees. Um, we have to look at your CV. So please send me your CV if that's the case, because depending on how much time you spend in which country and what degree you're getting, sometimes you can be eligible for uh, one or multiple admission uh, path and sometimes for none. So it's important before you send in an application to uh, check the eligibility with us. Um, before you start the application, so a few tips. Uh, number one, of course, research the school. I think it seems obvious, but it's very important to uh, do your homework and familiarize yourself with the, the school and the program. Uh, I mean, everyone has their own method, but if you need to have a chart, an Excel chart, you know, with like different columns and you need to sort out all the schools and all the programs, do what works for you. But it's really important to get at least the basic information by yourself, because once you contact the school, you don't want to spend an hour figuring out the program when maybe a lot of information is readily available on the web page and on the brochure and we prefer to spend time with you discussing you know your background and your motivation and try to understand a bit more who you are it's it's more important for us so it's it's better to have at least that uh, information uh, uh, at least on a basic level covered um, on your on your own time and of course it helps you also understand the program better the different parts of the curriculum that you can choose, uh, making sure that the program is a good, a good fit for you and for your career. Uh, second point, check the closest application deadline. Uh, the deadlines are all on the web page uh, for all application processes. So it's pretty straightforward for international admissions. You have four sessions per year. Uh, usually starting with a session in October, there is a January deadline, a March deadline and a May deadline approximately. And you have the exact dates and uh, the timeline on, on the web page. Uh, make sure you know those deadlines also beforehand because you realize that then you have to uh, put, it, put together the application. Uh, you have to prepare for a GMAT or GRE, which takes at least a few months, I think, <laughs> for most of you. Uh, some of you might be able to squeeze it in a few weeks, but uh, you need to have the time to prepare properly and without the stress. So I think the earliest you know the schedule and the timeline for the whole year, the better prepared you, you will be. Uh, so try to have a, a look at the at the admission section on the on the web page. Uh, book a one on one consultation with a recruiter. I think a lot of you don't dare to contact us, but please do. We're very happy to have a, a conversation with you. It's informal. It doesn't commit you to anything, but at least you know uh, where you're where you're going and you know exactly uh, where um, uh, you know if the program is a good uh, fit for you. Uh, you can reconfirm your eligibility, you can get some advice. So I really encourage you to, um, to try to, um, to get the, the, the meeting with us um, as soon as you want. Again, it doesn't have to be at a specific time. It can, can be early in the process when you start thinking about the school. And then, of course, we can uh, touch base a few months later to know uh, more about you and answer more specific questions. We don't need to have only one uh, conversation. More than happy to have more than one. Uh, and then 
before uh, the meeting, please send your CV or your LinkedIn profile because uh, we can prepare, you know, better also the chat. We understand a bit about your background before, and it's always uh, quite helpful to, to have that information. Um, then talk to student ambassador and alumni. I think Vikram here is <laughs> the best example that uh, they're very happy to contribute and to help and support you, you know, when you're applying. They were in your shoes uh, a couple of years ago, maybe a year ago for some of them. So they can really give you first hand experience on uh, the program, uh, the insider's perspective on the school. So they're very happy to, to help you. Maybe Vikram, you can tell us shortly, like, What's your role as an ambassador at the school? What does does it entail? And uh, why did you choose to do it also maybe? <laughs> <laughs> so I think that what you said is absolutely right. Uh, to get all these technical information, all these details on the website, but what really as a student you're looking for is the experience that the present students are getting. Uh, and that's where student ambassadors like me and a lot of my colleagues uh, play a role here. So we are here to help you to share the student's perspective of the whole program. Uh, what are the things that we found difficult? What are the things that we found very interesting? Uh, and for like a quick example, for example, the previous slide that you showed uh, the, you know, you can book one-on-one -on -one talk with the recruiters. Honestly, I was very um, skeptical about this. I was not very confident talking to a recruiter in the beginning because I didn't know how he's going to, he or she's going to judge my profile, whether it's going to be good, bad. But trust me, once I went past that barrier and I, I actually sent my CV and I got the response from them, it was a game changer for me because uh, they not only showed me what points are my strength, but they also told me how I could improve my gaps. So that was very useful for me. And uh, I, uh, after this, I contacted them several times. I also contacted them for like mock interviews during my internships and it was quite helpful. So things like these where, which you won't find, like, you know, you won't find these uh, information on the website directly, but that's where student ambassadors help. And when you contact them and you talk to the student ambassadors, we will be able to tell you our perspective and uh, it's quite helpful, I feel. Thank you, Vikram. Um, and then the next uh, point, so um, also before, um, once you started the application, um, be your authentic self. I think it's obvious, but we want to know about you, so we don't need standard uh, information that you think we want to hear. It's really important that you talk about you and your passions, if you have some hobbies, if you love sports or anything you know that really makes you unique we're very, very interested in that so you don't need to uh, feel pressure to come up with new interests that you don't have just be yourself and tell us you know we understand we have different types of profiles in the class and different types of personalities there's no set profile uh, everyone brings something interesting so uh, really feel free to to share those uh, with us uh, give some personal personalized examples in your essays. Um, again, we understand like each school has a different program and maybe some items in our program re really fit, you know, uh, in your career plan and maybe specific courses or specializations. So feel free to share that with us um, and uh, try to link back, you know, what the program and the school offer with what you're looking uh, for. Uh, and of course, we want to make sure it's a good fit also in terms of personality. So we want to make sure you understand like the school's culture, make sure to contact alumni again, just to see if you know those are the people that you would like to study with and work with in, in the future. Uh, I would just like to give a quick example in terms of the essays. So it's a very interesting story. I was talking with a colleague of mine a few days back and you know, we, we get, uh, keep getting these questions a lot about essays, how to write our essays, how to make it original. The thing is, the essay is, I think, the key point in the admission because it shows who you are. Yeah? It, it, show, it, it shows you outside your academic qualifications and experiences. It shows who you are. So my colleague, he wrote an application and he was learning French and uh, he was not very, you know, not an expert in the language, but he was good at it. He was confident and he wrote the essay in French. 
and there were a lot of mistakes in his French. Okay, there were it was not perfect, but he wrote it and he sent the application. And in the end, he mentioned that there are. I realized there are mistakes in my essay, but I do assure you that these mistakes are authentic. My French is authentic, and I'm willing to learn and improve. So. It was an amazing example for me. I mean, it can't get more original than this. So you get the point. Your essay does not have to be absolutely perfect. It does not need to be grammatically very correct, but it has to be original. And this is just an example that I wanted to share with you guys. Thank you so much, Vikram. Um, then, of course, define a, a professional and personal goals. So we don't necessarily expect you to know exactly where you're going to be in 20 years, uh, but at least you have an un understanding of what are you looking for, you know, that in the school and in the program that are going to help you and support your career goal. Um, we need to understand the trajectory maybe of your career. So you don't look into a business school uh, uh, randomly. I'm sure you you have a, a specific um, plans in your mind. So share, you know, with us, uh, maybe what challenges you expect you will find also in your career and how ESCPs and the program are going to uh, help you overcome those challenges. So try to, to really explain, you know, uh, where, where you see yourself and um, give us um, also more um, holistic and uh, well-rounded sense of who you are as a person. So make the most of the uh, application. We need to see more in the application than we have in the CV. Uh, so you have to give a little bit more of a, a personal uh, elements, you know, of your, of your, um, of your project. Um, also, personalize your CV. I mentioned it's ideally a one pager because it has to be a business CV, so we don't need to have four or five pages. Try to have just some key responsibilities, a few bullet points, you know, about the different uh, maybe internships that you've done. Um, have a profile summary, it's really helpful for the admissions jury also when they're reviewing. Uh, many applications, it's easier to understand also your background when you, we have a, a, a summary. And then add a section also with all the languages that you speak, the ex extracurricular activities, because we're really interested in those also. So um, add um, as much uh, on the CV as possible. Uh, don't underestimate the application essay. So you have to be mindful of the word limit. They're quite short. Um, you can add a motivation letter if you feel like you don't go too much into the details you know, of your motivation in, in, uh, in the essays. Uh, focus on the depth of your content. So you don't need to give 10 examples. Maybe one good example is, uh, is uh, better. No copy paste, I have to say it, <laughs> because we often see the name of another school uh, in the application. We understand that, of course, you're probably using the same arguments and your motivation and your background uh, are the same for each school where you're presenting an application, but don't copy and paste, try to personalize again. Um, uh, your uh, your essays it's it's important and add a motivation letter uh, if you, if you wish. This is a good I think uh, topic that maybe Vikram will uh, discuss completing a GMAT and GRE. It's an important part of your application and it's probably one where you need to invest a lot of time and energy. Uh, we do prefer uh, GRE or GMAT, but we also accept, of course, uh, Taj Maj for the French speakers, and also the CAT examination is accepted for Indian students. Uh, maybe Vikram, you can tell us which test you uh, prepared and why you chose that one. Sure. So for me, I chose GRE. Um, I had the option of taking GMAT or GRE. So I chose GRE because uh, for me, the exam pattern of GRE was more suitable. Uh, before deciding which exam I want to do, I checked some of the mock tests, some of the sample tests that are available on the websites. And uh, I gave a mock test and I found that my natural inclination was more aligned towards the GRE type of exam. So that was the reason why I chose it. And as for preparation, it was 
uh, quite intense preparation. But again, if you are systematic and if you are able to start, give give out dedicated time for preparing for this exam, I think it's uh, very much achievable. It's not a very difficult challenge. Uh, but uh, I think I think uh, from my side, I would recommend you to give a mock exam uh, for all the different options and choose the exam that you are naturally inclined towards. That's the best tip that I could give, and it works like a charm. And someone is asking, I see in the uh, Q and A, uh, how how much did you uh, achieve on the GRE? <laughs> So my score was not top top. Uh, I think I uh, my score was around 320 uh, in GRE. Uh, there were quite other students who have got much more better than, better score than mine. And I also know some students who have not got that that high scores. Like you know their scores were around 310, 308. So the point is GRE score is just 10 percent of the entire application process. So if you feel that you have a very high GRE score and you don't need to focus on anything else, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, I know cases where people with uh, scores of 320 have applied and uh, because their overall profile was not strong enough, they got rejected. So GRE score, yes, focus on GRE. Keep it like it is important, but at the same time, focus on the whole application. That is much more important. Uh, your extracurriculars, uh, your other activities. If you are into sports, focus on that. If you have done some sort of voluntary uh, voluntary activities, you can uh, emphasize on that as well. Um, if you have prior experience, uh, work experience, internships, or if you have started your own uh, business or a personal brand or something, you can even focus on that. So again, it's it's about the whole application. It's not just about GRE. Your GRE scores are not going to determine whether you secure an admission or not. Thank you, Vikram. Yeah, it's a very good point you're making. In the overall evaluation, the GMAT or GRE score amounts to 10% of the uh, overall grade. So you can uh, definitely uh, focus on getting good grades during your bachelor, uh, securing an internship maybe in, in between you know, the bachelor and the master, or even during your last year of your bachelor, if you can, um, because uh, those will be um, more, more important in the, um, in the evaluation. Um, I'll try to go over the rest. I think we have 10 more minutes, so I'll, I'll try to be quick. Uh, as far as the interview in, is concerned, so again, research the school and what what will be the format of the interview because it's a unique interviewing process in each school. We will have different style, maybe different timings, etc. So you can ask the school, of course, we're uh, very transparent about so what you can expect and we want you to be uh, well prepared and confident when we meet you. So uh, of course you can ask for uh, tips from us and from uh, the alumni um, community. Um, preparing for the interview. So the interview panel can be depending on the program and the school, of course, a one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two, sometimes more. Sometimes you're meeting with a member of the faculty, it could be alumni, it could be the administration of the program. Uh, sometimes it can be face-to-face -face on campus or it can be online. Sometimes it's a pre-recorded video essay also. We tried that during the COVID <laughs> at, at the worst period. So uh, you can ask definitely what's the style, if it's the traditional interview, more of a blind interview with someone that doesn't have your application, a stress interview or more of a conversation. Um, and the length also, so, and what, what are the topics that are going to be covered? So maybe Vikram, you can tell us what was your experience with, with your interview? Like how long was it and who mm -hmm. did you, who did you meet? Yeah. So my experience was very good. Actually, uh, I had an interview with a professor and a member of the, uh, uh faculty and uh, the whole interview process lasted for around 45 minutes i would say 45 minutes to 50 minutes and it was very uh, straightforward uh, it was not a stress interview it was more like a conversation for me they asked me why i'm choosing escp uh, and what what was my objective what was my career goals but the thing that i would like to stress a little bit about is that be very thorough with your cv because the cv is the only thing that they have about you the cv and the essays so they are going to ask you every question from the CV and the essay. So you need to be very sure what 
whatever you mention on your cv just be confident about that and be honest uh, be very honest that's that's all i would say because if you're honest then it's easy to answer the questions and your follow up questions are going to be related to the answers that you're going to give so be honest and just relax and the interview is very easy it's not a difficult process thank you vikram thank you so much um and then the next point, uh, know your application. Uh, as you understand, it serves as a base for the interview. So the admissions committee first reviews the, the application and there is a first screening based on that. So um, and then we, uh, of course, use it as a, um, a base for our chat with you during the interview. So it's important that you know, of course, what you mentioned in your in your essay, in your CV. Again, no copying and pasting <laughs> I, I mention it because it's it's very important we we feel like it's uh, such a huge commitment it's not just a program you or a school you join for a couple of years it's a community which will be your network for the rest of your career so really invest the time to to personalize it as much as possible and you have to be ready to go into, of course, greater details than in your essay. So during the interview, we might want to clarify some aspects of your application uh, that maybe um, you uh, mentioned, and we want to understand a little more about, uh, about this. Um, so make sure you, you review the application before uh, the interview. Uh, know what the school is looking for. Uh, we, of course, we're looking at some qualities also, um, aside from the academic achievements or prestigious internships, we want to um, understand the potential. So where you see yourself in the future, we ask ourselves, do we want you to be part of the community? Do we want you representing the school? Uh, would you have a successful career? How well would you do in a job interview? So I think the way you have to approach the selection interview is pretty much like, like a job interview. You know, We're looking at uh, quality and uh, different types of personalities. It's important that it can shine through during, uh, during the interview. It might be also a way of uh, double checking the, the level in English because sometimes on the paper students have, have a very high score, but then we need to make sure that you can uh, express yourself and uh, feel uh, you know comfortable uh, uh, studying in English and speaking in English. So that might be uh, something that's done during the interview. Um, know how to approach this, the challenging questions. So, uh, sometimes you might might get what you might perceive as a tough question, but it's not uh, something to make you uh, feel uncomfortable. It's more to realize, you know, if you are uh, self-aware. And for example, we might ask you if you had a difficulty, a failure in a previous internship, something, a challenge that you overcame and that you want to to explain to the jury. Uh, it's a way of seeing also if. You, how you can think on your feet. Um, if you are being challenged, you know, how do you react? So that's the kind of thing we might be interested in uh, uh, checking during the interview. Also, uh, shake off uh, applicants that are a bit too rehearsed. Sometimes we feel like you don't have to learn by heart all the correct answers. You know, we want to uh, understand, you know, a bit more about you again. So that might be one of the reasons we ask uh, tough questions, uncommon questions could be also uh, to clarify some aspects of your of your application. We might ask you about competing schools, which schools are you applying to? It's not a trick question at all. It's really about understanding, you know, how conservative or not you are about your choice of schools. And sometimes it's also about determining if you're really focused on France or it's more like Europe as a general uh, concept or you just want to study abroad and you don't even really care about which country that can happen so uh, we want to make sure there is a consistency you know in applying to ESCP and that you do have a very strong interest in um, 
in um, studying in your in our campuses and experiencing uh, those countries uh, make sure you're up to date with the business news because they might ask you questions on uh, on that maybe Vikram you can tell us if you got that kind of question during yes, your interview yes I did <laughs> you I did actually uh, they asked me about my area of interest and I said I'm very passionate about automobiles and they said they asked me okay do you know any automobile related news that's happening uh, in Europe at that moment so there was a award there was a, a expo going on called ICMA which is like for automobiles and I said that ICMA is going on because I'm passionate I knew about it I was aware about all the latest news that's happening in that industry so I immediately told about the event and then they started asking me more and more questions about the, like you know the general questions about that those, those events and how it helps uh, for a company how it helps in the business and so on so i would totally agree uh, to like agree with this uh, that be aware with the latest news that's happening yes it's a very common question we ask like to comment on maybe something that's happening in the world right now it could be politics economics uh, you choose the topic but if you have no subject that you feel uh, is interesting and that you want to comment and we might be a bit worried about you know how, how interested you are in in uh, in, um, in what's going on in the world so it's important to have at least a few topics in in mind um be yourself again i think that's the best advice we can give you we want to get to know you um there is a vetting process with the application itself, a first uh, screening based on that, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, we already reviewed your background. Chances are if you made it to the interview, it's because your profile is very interesting for us. So be confident, you know, that if you make it to the interview, you probably have great chances of getting an admission. Uh, so again, give personalized examples and explain to us, you know, what makes ESCP uh, so well suited for you and look at the, the specializations we offer, uh, look at what our professors are uh, publishing and writing about. It's very important to, to be well aware of the school. Um, we want to make sure that you're a good fit also for the for the institution. So again, we check the personality, make sure this is a very good fit for you and stay grounded. Um, prepare some questions. It's also very common that we wrap up the interview asking you if you have some questions for the admissions uh, committee. It's very important to have at least a couple of questions uh, ready because it, it's supposed to be a discussion uh, conversation so um, the interest is I think on both sides and uh, it's important to have meaningful targeted questions for the for the jury try to stay away from questions that are very easily answered again on the web page I think you want to make that time more, a bit more special and about you know uh, determining things that maybe you can't find on the brochure and the website um, and uh, yeah try to prepare them beforehand just uh, to make sure you know you're not uh, caught off guard uh, during the interview and then the last point I will I'll try to make sure I'm uh, meeting the timeline, <laughs> the schedule, dress the part and be prepared, uh, even if it's a Skype interview or a Zoom interview, it's important to dress formally, if anything, I think it's better to overdress than to underdress for that type of interview. Uh, so don't sit on the couch uh, with your slippers on. We don't. <laughs> we, we want to see you. You know, uh, you have to dress the part. So um, the general rule, I would say, if you have a suit or a shirt, depending on the season, of course, or the climate where you live, uh, try to dress formal. Same for uh, men and women. It's the same rule. And um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you can tell us, uh, Vikram. Also, it was a online interview for you. How did yes, you uh, how did you choose to dress? And uh, oh. <laughs> it was it was my first first interview, uh, and it was my first international interview as well. So I was a little bit uh, anxious. I was a little bit uh, concerned how it's gonna go, but it went really well. Uh, the interview was very nice. And in terms of dressing, I chose to wear formal because uh, formal, you, nothing can go wrong with formal. You know? like, so I, I would say you don't have to dress very fancy, but just wear something that makes you feel confident. Like, you know, when you wear a good shirt, when you wear, like if you have a good blazer or a good shirt, you wear that, 
your confidence increases automatically and that's what you want to show in the interview that you're confident and yeah so <laughs> Thank you, Vikram. Thank you so much. So I think we covered the presentation. Maybe we have a couple of minutes for to answer a few questions live. Yes. I will just leave this uh, slide because you have all the contacts. So if you can't stay longer today, for example, but you want to book a one on one meeting with us, you have all the contacts on each campus. Uh, you have an email address for student ambassadors at the bottom of the page, so memeambassadors at esep.eu. Feel free to send an email uh, if you want to get uh, student feedback and you just want to know a little bit more again about the school life, uh, maybe the student societies, the sports, uh, etc you can you can definitely ask uh, and feel free to contact us of course to um, keep us posted on where you're at with your application or if you have some doubts and you want to you know to get uh, your doubts uh, cleared we can do that together we'll be very happy and i'll just take maybe a couple of questions we'll try to answer live and then if i don't have time to answer now I will be in the booth, you know, for the rest of the afternoon. So you can drop by and uh, send in your question there also, and we'll try to to answer uh, as much as possible. Um, there is a question on the age limit. So there's no age limit to apply for the MIM program, but it's it's a program for young graduates. So the general rule is students just finish their bachelor uh, freshers, or uh, maybe they just finished a first year of a master degree. At the most, they might have a five year university diploma, maybe a year of experience or two. Uh, so the general rule is that it's not suitable if you're 30 and over so that's the general rule but chances are if you're close to 30 um probably an mba might be more more suitable but we can of course uh, discuss it you can send a cv um um what else we have a question about the different uh, parts of the evaluation the weighing of the uh, application so you have 40 percent which is the profile review which is uh including your internships your academic records your international exposure etc so the whole profile is 40 percent uh, Twenty percent is the level of English. Ten percent will be the GMAT or GRE. And that's for international uh, students, and then the remaining thirty percent uh, is the interview. Uh, someone is asking about the SHL test. I think it's better to contact. Uh, it. I, I take it from your name that it's from the. Turin campus, probably from Italy, uh, you can ask Adriano because it's a specific test that we don't have in Paris. So SHL is a bit uh, particular since we don't offer it in, in Paris. Um, someone is asking how to book a one-on-one -on -one interview. You can book it with us by email. You can just email us your, your CV and then we can book a timing together. Uh, and I think we answered more or less everything else. Um, now someone is asking about the English test. Is it preferable to have a 99 uh, on the TOEFL or over 900 in TOEIC? As a rule, a general rule, I would say we prefer TOEFL because it's a bit more academic and it's a bit more thorough than a TOEIC. It's uh, assessing more uh like the reading and writing and uh um oral and written comprehension so TOEFL would be better um what else i think we answered everything uh, there's a question how much time do we have to accept the offer if we receive one usually it's about one week so it is uh yeah you need to you need to make up your um your mind quite quickly uh, once you get the admission result. So yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I would also quickly like to add that uh, if you go to the MIM uh, page on the website, you will find a list of all the student ambassadors that are available for your help. And the reason why I'm saying this is because each student, we have like a lot, like a huge number of student ambassadors and every student ambassador is from a different background. 
from a different country. So you can find the student ambassador who is more suitable for your requirements, who, whom you feel that can, you know, you, they can relate to you more and you can address your query or your doubts directly to them and send the email. So in that case, it would make it much more easier for them to identify your profile and then answer that, answer that question. Yes, so thank you so much uh, everyone for attending the session. I think we need to finish now. Uh, feel free to drop by the, the booth and ask your questions there. We'll, we'll be here the rest of the afternoon. And uh, thank you so much, Vikram, for taking the time uh, on a Saturday afternoon. No we really appreciate it. <laughs> thank you so much and uh, see, you, see you soon. And uh, hopefully all the uh, candidates here today will be in touch very soon. Thank you so much and uh, have a great Saturday. Thank you. All the best, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye, Vikram. Bye-bye. Bye, Nancy. See you soon. See you. <laughs>